beginning of the year, uh, I had a dream. And I mean, I had a lot of dreams, right? He's like, we're, we're a visitation kind of people, right? But I had this dream that shifted the course of the ministry, the focus, everything. And in my dream, me and Millie stepped out of our house here in the Carolinas. And right in front of us was this gathering, um, this gathering that we'd never seen before. There were people that were running to be part of it. And in that, we saw millennial types, entrepreneur types, young families, uh, older people, but a lot of millennial type families covered in tattoos with laptops, briefcases, those that are struggling with gender identity, and just all these types that are, you know, looking for something in life. And I see them running into this place, and I'm like, what is this place? Why have I never seen this place? And so, I, you know, I take my wife's hand and we go in. I said, come on, we got to check this out. And when we walked into this place, uh, all of these, there were probably hundreds and hundreds, and they were just worshiping in the purest form of worship. I mean, the only way that I could describe it was it was like a happy holiness. It was out of an overflow, out of a union, out of identity with Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And so these people are just worshiping. I said, have we not known about this? It's right here in the Carolinas. It started in the Carolinas. It's here. And as we walked in, all of these people just kind of stopped and looked at us and said, they're here. Let's party. And I'm like, what? 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 Who's here? Party? What? You know, and they're just worshiping and people are on their faces and people are just going after the presence, right? And so I'm like wondering, what is this? And I turn around and I look up and I see this banner and it says Church 14. And I'm like, what the heck is Church 14? I wake up and now my heart's just burning. I'm stirring, I'm on fire. You know what I mean? And I immediately said, God, what is, what is, what is Church 14? And he said, it's an Acts 14 people, a movement of Acts 14 people. And so I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'm a preacher, but I don't have every part of Acts memorized. So I'm going to go ahead and open up to Acts 14 and see what exactly is going on here. So I open up to Acts 14 and it's the story of Paul and Barnabas at Iconium. And as I get through the chapter, I get to this part where it says, uh, let me see where I want to start here because I want to make sure that I don't miss what I'm trying to say. Okay, so we'll start at verse 1. It says, so it comes to pass in Iconium that Paul and Barnabas go together into the synagogue. They begin speaking, and a great multitude, both of the Jews and the Greeks, believed. And then it says, but immediately the unbelieving stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. <laughs> Sounds like 2018 to me. I don't know about you, but boy, let me tell you, man, it has been something. You know, in the midst of celebrating so much, yesterday we celebrated our son Titus's eighth birthday and that he's completely done with four years of cancer treatments. Thanks to the prayers of the body of Christ. Thanks to your prayers and your partnership and your travail. Amen. And, you know, in the midst of celebrating so much, when, when all of this began, this year just hit. And it, there's, it was, it's been an intense year. I said, my God, something really good is going to happen this year. It's a year of transition. It's a year. Hey, and I didn't realize we suddenly had a fifth bun in the oven, my friends. Like, how does this keep happening, Josh? Maybe you can feel, I don't know, Pastor Mike, you want to help me out later? Just like, what is going on here? I'm just kidding. I know how it happens. Anyway, that should be my next book. How it happens in the spirit. No, um. But there's something going on. So, the unbelieving leaders come and poison the minds against the brethren. And then it says in Acts 14.3, so they decided to stay a really long time. <laughs> I like that. There's something about that in the midst of persecution, in the midst of accusation, right? In the midst of, of somebody coming to poison others against the vision, the dream, the baby that God has put on the inside of you. Say, you know what? I'm not going to put my tail between my legs. Listen, I've been, we've been missionaries in numerous countries, states, cities. I know what it's like to have to put your tail between your legs and go run out of the region because nobody believes in you and everybody's demonizing your work and everything else. But there's something about having a grace of the Lord to say in the face of opposition, in the face of persecution, in the face of accusation, we're going to decide to stay even longer in your face, right? And then check this out. Then it says this, so they decided to stay even longer, boldly giving testimony to the word of his grace and signs and wonders followed at their hands. 
Can you imagine that? So what if in the face of opposition, in the face of, you know, whatever's going on, right? There's been a lot of revelation released over the past few years, the body of Christ, but the opposition has become greater, greater, and greater, but greater is he that's in us. And the Lord is saying, I'm looking for reformers. Can I be honest with you? I don't feel like he just wants revivalists anymore. He needs reformers. We need both, but not everybody can be revivalists. We need revivalists and we need reformers. And he's saying, where are my reformers? Where are those that will stay when the revival starts to quote unquote fizzle out and actually create a culture where we can host what God is doing? And that's what you guys do here. That's why it's a kingdom church. That's what New Day is all about. That's their heart, right? But beyond that, he said, where are my reformers? And so I'm going to talk about that this morning. But to get to the point and to get to the, the, you know, what we're announcing this morning, I said, well, God, what do you want us to do? And he said, I want you to launch church 14. Now, can I be honest with you? I've shied away from the word church for about 10 years. I don't want to name something church unless it's really a church. You know what I mean? So, but God, I'm not a pastor. We're, ev- I'm, we're evangelists. And he's like, really? Then how come you desire to do this? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Okay. And so slowly but surely, the definition of things begin changing. And so we launched this Church 14 movement earlier this year. And we dubbed, you know, Pastor Josh Wallace, the community pastor. We've been doing classes online, been doing outreach, been meeting in Charlotte, meeting wherever, just all over the place. And, and one of the things that I want to see, I want to see the lost actually come into the kingdom like an axe and discipled. Not just shown how to do signs and wonders and don't develop anything else, just, just, but actually get discipled so that they live out of union and overflow with Jesus. Do you get what I'm saying? And so... And so we've been working on establishing a mission statement and vision and all that for the Church 14 movement. But the Lord said, Rob, I don't want you to just launch a movement. You're, this is going to be, you know, this is going to be just one tiny piece of reformation worldwide, body of Christ globally. But he said, I want you to write a detox program. I'm like, a what? He said, I want you to write a detox program. And so here we have a sarcastic and religious spirit crushing book called Professor Rob's Big Bad Doctrine Detox. We've only got 12 of them left. We're almost sold out already, but we got 12 left at the back. There's 11 plus this one. And I'll talk about this a little bit more. And he said, I want you to release the book along with the launch of the movement so that everyone that wants to just get rid of all their preconceived notions and see Jesus more clearly than they've ever seen him before can come and have all these lies they believed about God be broken down and just get rid of all that stuff. So there's just this clarity, this union, this simplicity. And that's the purpose of this. And so we released, we launched the movement in April along with the release of the book. We had a soft and then a hard launch. And then a few months later, the Lord starts speaking to us and he's like, you know, it's not just going to stay like a mobile movement, right? And I'm like, oh boy, what, what are you saying, God? So about, uh, I want to say eight years ago, we sat down with pastors Mike and Debbie, and we um, talked a little bit about some vision that we had, and we knew it wasn't time yet, but we felt like at some point we would partner with New Day and even be covered by them and, you know, and, and launch something, but we didn't know when that would be, so we're off in Alaska, we're off in Las Vegas, pioneering, a, you know, revival center, evangelism, whatever, whatever God was having us do, and the Lord has spoken to us that it is time. It's been confirmed through the mouths of many prophets, through many people of God. And so I want to introduce to you guys the Church 14, we call it C14 team, as we prepare for a church and reformation hub plant in the Carolinas. Uh, So you know my wife, Millie. We've got Josh Wallace. And we've got Eddie and Aaron Sosa from Bethel Redding and then from Tampa, Florida. They've planted a few churches. Aaron's heart is worship. Aaron, Eddie's heart is uh, evangelism and ministry school and really equipping and discipling and getting in there and doing this stuff. Josh's heart is just the glory. He wants anything he can do to shepherd people into the glory, into the finished work of Jesus. That's, that's what he's going to do. What? I know I didn't say that yet because that's the big point I'm about to get to. So September the 14th, we were supposed to be here announcing this when a hurricane struck the city that we're planning in. So we are going to be planning a C-14 hub in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And we're going to be having a hub for equipping, missions, church, community. And so real quick, we want to just release this mission statement for C-14. It's called 
the C14 Hub mission statement is this, to establish a healthy five-fold community empowered by his grace, bringing reformation to the church and to society. So I'm asking you guys if you'd have our back in prayer and as partners of, in the body of Christ, would you guys pray for this? Would you guys walk with us? Because I told Pastor Mike, I said, I've never embarked on this before. Well, I, I need you to walk with me. Because, you know, you've got a healthy community. You've got people that know Jesus and that love the, the body of Christ and know what they're doing. They know what they're called to. They know who they are. And I said, so we need you to walk with us. And he basically was like, oh, well, we've been waiting for this for years. We knew. We just didn't know what the timing would be. And so here's the timing. So would you guys pray? For this C14 launch in Myrtle Beach, we're looking at March to April right now, but you know we don't know anything yet. So we don't know. We don't have a place to live. We don't have anything there yet. So we're just kind of this is you know grassroots right here. So would you guys pray for that? That's our big announcement thus far for today. And real quick, would everyone just say hi and whatever you want? You got something on your heart? Release it real quick. I know you. you are. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, yep. uh, hi, my name is Josh. I'm. Uh, from just on the other side of Hickory, uh, up closer towards the mountains, if you can't tell by the accent. Um, I was just thought I'd say something before Rob did, but because uh, he loves to make fun of it. Uh, no, but uh, I think I think uh, you were in your head. I know um, we've only been together for like eight years, but uh, I think one thing we're we're seeing right now uh, in this country and really around the world this this mass confusion and deception that's going on uh, is really more like what we're moving into here. What we're seeing is a convergence of all these different movements that have happened throughout the past. And we're seeing this convergence into one stream because the Father is, is pulling all children back to himself. We are of one spirit and of unity and so I feel that, um, that this convergence is happening and that all hell is breaking loose to try to stop this. Well, God said that I crushed him under my heel. He can just bruise, but he's already been crushed. So we're, we're, we're moving forward with a movement. We're declaring grace. We're declaring the forgiveness of sins. We're declaring the righteousness of God in Christ through his resurrection unapologetically and we will do it anywhere and everywhere we go and just bringing people into the glory and uh, that's what I enjoy I'm getting drunk right now so I'm gonna pass it family around the campfire that's what we're really about the grace gospel the unification of the body of Christ within the union of God it's really simple and if we can flow as a family, that's where the movement and the shift happen. So, yeah, we're really excited about this, guys. You know, when Jesus raised up disciples and, and he taught crowds, he was, he was never solely pastoring them. He was pastoring as an apostle because his goal was never to build himself a congregation that would only adore him, but would go out and heal the nations and preach the gospel of Jesus. And that is the function of the church. The church is a five-fold ministry. That's the function of this church. And you see, the microphone is an apostolic position, but every single person in here is a pastor, apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, and it's and, and this is the, the vision, you know, it starts, I'm a life coach, and when I, God gave me this vision of three functions in each life of, of a believer, and it starts with your personal life, and it moves on to community, and then your ministry. If you don't have those three things in order, and I mean in that order, you're not going to be much help to your family if your personal life is a mess. You're not going to be much help to your community if your family's a mess, and you're not going to last very long. Even the most anointed person will not last unless the, the personal and their families in order and that's biblical 
Now, when we build a community, we build a healthy community, we build a, a lifestyle um, around our beliefs, around Christianity, around the healing signs and wonders, and that is a five-fold work, to come together and to build healthy community, get our families in order, get our minds on things above, not on things of the world, and if you want to know what's going to change the chaos and the craziness of this generation, that I don't think anyone's seen anything like what's going on now. If you want to see that happen, we need to rise up as a church and start building fivefold communities like New Day and, and plant them more than just a New Day, but start going to the ends of the earth. And so we plan on bringing what we have been imparted to here to Myrtle Beach. And I'm so thankful for pastors Mike and Debbie. You guys have just been parents to us, and we had no idea that we would lose our first spiritual dad last year, but we felt so covered. And, and I remember Rob getting off the phone with you, and he's like, I do have a dad. I do have a dad. And he just felt so filled up because when you're in ministry, you need people to talk to. You need parents and you need accountability. So thank you guys for loving and believing in us. We're really excited and, and I hope you all come and visit and whatever God tells you to do. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Woo! How many of y'all think I should just leave the mic with her? Hey.